Great, I will get us started. Well, hi everyone and happy Wednesday. Welcome to our conversation project community call. I hope that you are all having a great week. My name is Chrissy Cronin and I will be your WebEx host today. While we're waiting for everyone to join us, I'd like to run through a few WebEx tips and tricks. If you can hear my voice right now, you have connected successfully. If you would like to change your audio preferences, please click the audio and video tab at the top of your screen and click switch audio. You can also find this by clicking the mute unmute button at the bottom of the screen. If you have a question or comment at any point during the call, please feel free to type into the chat box. The way to do that is by selecting the chat bubble that is at the bottom right of your screen. Once you click this, the chat box will pop up. To send a public message, write your message at the bottom of your screen and send it to everyone. You can also use the raise your hand icon, which is located on the right hand side of your chat and will call on you to voice your question. If you're having any technical difficulties, please chat to host and I will help you. We're going to take a moment to get things started in the chat. Type into the chat box your name, location and organization and make sure that you send your message to everyone. Great. Well, thank you and keep on chatting in. Looks like we have a great group with us today. And thank you for everyone for your responses. We're going to move ahead, but keep chatting if you haven't already. With that, I'll turn things over to Patty Webster, advisor for the Conversation Project. Take it away, Patty. Great. Thank you so much, Chrissy. And welcome, everyone. It's so exciting to see some familiar faces um, and some new names on the list of attendees that I see. And I um, appreciate you, you all can continue typing in your name. Um, I saw a question, Jessica, you asked if there was any contact hour today. We, we don't provide any, um, I'm assuming you mean like CEUs. Um, we don't have that, unfortunately, but I, we'll still make sure that you get a, a lot of information out of this hour and, and it's worth your while. So I have the pleasure of um, introducing some great uh, speakers today and um, welcoming you all who are, I'm making sure that this is going to be a really heavy on chat call. Uh, we are real big on using this chat function um, to make sure that you guys get the most out of the hour um, and making sure that you're sharing ideas because we've got some fantastic uh, folks that are here that are doing some wonderful things. So we want to make this your call. Um, and so first, before we jump into it, I just want to recognize that um, I know there's a lot going on um, across the whole U.S., uh, not just with COVID happening and continuing um, but the crazy weather, um, I know we were just talking about power outages uh, in Richmond, Virginia. I know there's been snow. There's been a lot of um, um, really difficult situations. So I want to thank you for taking the time off and joining us uh, today on the call. And I just want to acknowledge, we, we do this on our team every week. We kind of acknowledge when we all gather, we're, we're located in different locations. Um, obviously, we're virtual now because of COVID. We start up a meeting and we ask each other, um, how are you coming to this meeting? How are you showing up? Because we know that there's a lot going on. So I'm going to just spend um, a minute or two to ask you all um, how you are showing up today. So it might be that you are full of energy. It might be that you've had some sadness going on. It might be that you are um, snowed in or you might not have electricity. So um, just, I'd love you to take just a, a few seconds to just go ahead and use that chat as you've been doing and, and just let us know how you're showing up today. to give an opportunity as you're typing in just to 
kind of recognize that we're all coming from different spaces and places. Um, and we hope that this hour is really going to provide um, some energy and some ideas. Um, so I see that there's uh, a little bit of well and grateful. I love that. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Nathan, we were talking before he got on has no power, but at least we can see you. So I'm very excited that your video still is working. Mm, so awaiting the next snowstorm. Um, Debbie, I didn't catch where you were coming from, but I know it's all over um, the US. So a lot of folks are catching snow, sun is shining. Um, well and good. Great. This is this is wonderful. Um, Stephanie, I, I appreciate that uh, you recognize that, that you're tired. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, but we hope that will provide a little bit of energy and so good. So thank you all for, uh, for letting us know how things are going. Um, so we're going to go and, and um, keep popping in your, your names where you're from. I want you to know also, so as you're, we're, we're doing this because um, we want you all to see if you recognize somebody that you know, go ahead and say hi. If you see that someone's in the state that you're in or doing something that you're doing, feel free to chat on the side. I am no, I have no problem with you all doing chat while I'm while I'm talking. Um, and we're going to take some pauses throughout the hour to um, just kind of check in on chat and see what ideas are being shared and, and what connections are being made. Um, so here's what we have for the next 54 minutes um, with you all. I talk a little bit about uh, the history of National Healthcare Decisions Day, and I'm excited. I'm going to introduce Nathan in a second, which I know he needs no introduction. Um, but Nathan Kotkamp, who founded NHPD, is going to share uh, a little bit of that with us today. Um, and then we're going to move to um, some plans. So, what do folks have planned, or what are they thinking of? Um, you may not be thinking of anything. That's probably why you're on this call. That's fantastic. You may have been planning for the year um, and readjusted for COVID, and uh, we want to hear from you. And our very first uh, person who's going to share with us is Laura Pilati from Honoring Choices Virginia. We are so excited to have Laura here. Um, she is leading her own call um, after the, at the top of this hour, so we encourage you, and Laura can share a little bit about what her webinar is up next. So she's going to share with us today um, a little bit about what they're doing in Honoring Choices Virginia. Um, and then I'm going to um, stop and pause and do some um, sharing because I, I know a couple others on the call have some great plans um, that I've been learning from. So we'll have some time for you to share your plans and just generate ideas with each other and then um, share some resources that we have that are coming up and what our next. <laughs> that hour sounds good. Um, I'm going to ask if you're not muted. Maybe mute. um, we're getting a little feedback. So. Just make sure we're, we're muted here. I'm just checking over on chat. I think everyone looks pretty good over there. Uh, Chrissy's going to help us uh, just kind of keep an eye on things and um, see if I'm missing anything over on chat. Um, so if you are new to the conversation project, so we've got a good number on the call today. Um, you may be very familiar with us. You may be new. And so I just take a, a few seconds to just kind of gather and, and share a little bit about what our mission is. Um, we are, our mission as a conversation project has um, not really changed over the years. Um, our goal is always the same, is to really help people share their wishes for care through the end of life and making sure that those wishes are understood and respected. And so um, we are really excited that you are here because I know a lot of you on the call share that same mission. Um, in addition to um, not just conversations, but helping people get those wishes documented, uh, making sure those, those wishes are respected um, in the healthcare system. And so we do this work by making sure that we get tools in people, people's hands. Our flagship and what we, what we started the conversation project um, really centered on was to get something in, in hand to jumpstart these conversations. And so um, we have our conversation starter guides, which are our flagship resources that we have just, if you haven't yet heard, we have just done a whole refresh over the last 10 months um, to really take a hard look at what were called conversation starter kits before are now called conversation starter guides. Um, we did, uh, we worked with a lot of fantastic experts, um, individuals with lived experience in the field to really ensure and take a look at our, our guides to make sure that they were inclusive and reaching everybody. Um, we know that not one tool can, can work for everybody, but we wanted to make sure that we could do our best to make sure that we are being inclusive with our language and our pictures and photos and um, 
uh, use of words um, to make sure that we were not turning people off of our resources. And so uh, we have, we used to have five guides, we now have six. Um, we have, let me just get my pointer here. Um, we have our conversation starter guide as our flagship guide uh, that is really for anybody to really think about and talk about what matters most to you. Um, we had one guide previously that was talking about um, being and choosing a healthcare proxy. We've now split that into two. Um, so we have a guide on choosing a healthcare proxy and one on being a healthcare proxy. Um, and um, the other guides we have are really focused on caregivers. So we have a guide for those that are caring for people living with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, um, and one for caregivers of children that have a serious illness. Um, we have a guide that we are really excited to um, help people think about, well, how do I talk to a, a member of a healthcare team about what I want um, and advocate for either myself or for those that really matter in my circles. Um, so that guide for talking with a healthcare team is, is for you. Um, we've got these other two guides that came out new in 2020 um, is a, a workbook for those that have been diagnosed with a serious illness. This is a what matters to me workbook um, that helps you think about what matters to you um, and care decisions you may want um, throughout your journey with, with living with that serious illness. Um, and then the last one here is um, something we put together because of COVID. So how can we be prepared in times of COVID? So. Um, if you have seen those guides and used those guides, um, we're always open for feedback. So as these new guides roll out, let us know what you think um, and let us know if these uh, refresh guides are helpful um, and reaching those within your community. Um, so along with those guides, we, um, we also are, we have a whole host of resources on our website. We're not going to go on uh, into details on, on the call about that because I want to get through um, and really focus on MHUD. Um, but we have videos and we, what we try to do is um, bring some, some humor um, and we have some videos that you can use. We don't make light of death, but we make sure that we make the topic more approachable and lighthearted. And so at any opportunity, we're trying to think of new ways to help folks jumpstart the conversation. Um, Kate DeBartolo, who leads our, our work, shared this cartoon with uh, our team. And I just want to kind of leave this here for you all just to take a peek at real quick. So we are big when we see something that's whether it's in a newspaper and I love that it's in the funnies um, that might say my age that I'm calling these the funny papers. Um, but uh, anytime there's a chance to jumpstart a conversation, go for it. So um, use a cartoon, use an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? I just saw this uh, in the comics. I made me realize I don't have uh, an emergency contact person. Would you do that for me? And let me tell you what really matters to me. So um, we're, we're really big on trying to help. And so if you can use that cartoon, go for it. Um, the other thing that uh, part of our work and what we do is really connect with those of you that are on the call. There are phenomenal folks that have been bringing um, and doing this work for years and really supporting their community members to have conversations um, and do advanced care planning. And so we are really big in supporting community members uh, like you on the call. And we are big on really partnering with like-minded organizations and individuals that are, have been doing this for years. And that's kind of how the Conversation Project and National Healthcare Decisions Day started and, and, and connected. Um, we are really proud to be able to help support National Healthcare Decisions Day. The resources um, and information now lives and is part of the Conversation Project, but Nathan Kotkamp, um, who I'm going to introduce right now, is very much a part and leads this work. And so we are so excited to have him here. And so um, Nathan, I'm going to introduce and, and um, bring you into the fold here to share a little bit about uh, the history and origins of National Healthcare Decisions Day. Nathan is um, really fantastic. I'm excited. I, I don't get to see you that often, Nathan, but um, I'm, I'm thrilled every year we get to, to have you here on this call. Um, your deep experience working in the healthcare industry um, with your, his, Nathan has a deep background in bioethics um, and experience in hospital systems and really motivating community members all over. Um, this movement has become absolutely exciting. Um, and so we're just really excited to have Nathan here. So go ahead, Nathan, we'll have you take it away. And I can, uh, if you want me to, to advance the slides for you, yeah, we, can, we can pass it over. Uh, well, if you can pass it over, I should be okay. Um, right. And can you hear me okay, Patty? I hear you perfectly. Let me, let's pass the ball. Okay, fantastic. Well, um, 
let me just start in a somewhat unusual way. And first of all, thank you for doing that um, sort of where is everybody on the call. Um, for a whole bunch of reasons, um, I have been very, very dedicated uh, in the last uh, several years to a gratitude practice. Um, so I, everything I do first thing in the morning and last thing I do at night is I have a big journal and I just write down three things I'm grateful for. Um, and it can be the weirdest collection of things. I encourage everyone to do that. But for, for the moment, um, I'm just going to share that where I am is in my outside office shed with no power. My two dogs are here and they're probably going to want to um, say hello at some point while I'm talking. And my water heater died last night. So depending on where you are, you probably took a shower, had warm water, you know, these sorts of things uh, that we, we have happen every single day. We don't think about them. Um, so it makes me all the more grateful uh, for the fact that uh, I'm appreciating that I was able to take a shower two days ago and not this morning. So um, in some ways, end of life care issues and advanced care planning are sort of like that. I mean, it's, it's one of these things that doesn't matter where you go, um, you, see different reports that Americans are terrifically terrible um, at talking about end of life issues and uh, advanced care planning. You know, our approach to uh, the pandemic has been just terrible as well. Um, so we need to take moments um, to really focus on, on what's important and we need to do it in a way that is approachable to folks. Um, we, we know that it's a sensitive topic but one of the reasons that National Healthcare Day, uh, Day Healthcare Decisions Day exists is to take some of the weight off of it. Um, we often talk about the fact that um, it, it always seems to be uh, the wrong time uh, until it's too late. And so one of the things that this event uh, exists to do is to create a very neutral catalyst for conversation, much in the same way that um, you know, Mother's Day was just selected for the whatever day Mother's Day was and, and Go Pink initiative and the Go Red initiative. It, there's nothing specifically about April 16, other than the fact that, and I'm going to bring in the humor pit piece, many of you know that it is uh, intentionally the day after tax day because nothing in life is certain but death and taxes, as our um, great forefounder founder uh, Ben Franklin told us. So. We can use humor. We can use this sort of neutral um, way of disarming people and helping them understand that uh, this is, a, is an issue that we've selected one day out of the year. Um, but it's not just about one day of the year. And in, you know, if COVID has shown us anything, uh, it is that we all should be planning and have our, our arrangements made well, well, well in advance. Um, so that's just a little overview. And I'm not going to spend much time uh, talking about the history of, of National Healthcare Decisions Day, but I do want to share a little bit about it um, as, as we move into um, the next discussions. And I don't know, do I have control of the slides or you want to just flip to the next one, Patty? Uh, yep. I don't yeah, need you control can, if you want to, I only have you, like four you, slides. You've so. got control, yeah. But, but yeah, if it's All not right. working, go ahead and we can do it for you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try and flip the next one. So, oh, by the way, hi, that's me, Nathan Kotkamp. I've got a master's in bioethics. I'm a partner with Waller. Um, and believe it or not, this is my 15th year doing this event. The first two years were Virginia only, and um, we took it national in 2009, uh, or 2008, sorry. Um, it's unbelievable how uh, the time has gone. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I was the founder. Um, I don't try and take much uh, praise for that. It's just something that I felt very passionate about, uh, largely because of my passion for bioethics and also um, the fact that I sat on several hospital ethics committees and just saw the issue of, of lack of advanced care planning be this recurring theme over and over and over again, um, and realizing that we, you know, we don't have uh, necessarily a magic wand uh, to fix it all, but boy, we have tools in our tool chest that we were just leaving um, without any real focus on them. Uh, the way that advanced care planning was, was addressed uh, by the intake clerks at the hospital, but never followed up by the doctors and the nurses and all these sorts of things um, was really troubling to me. And so uh, I created this event as, as an effort to just try and bring some focus. And um, as you'll see here, it, it's not limited to healthcare providers. We've had 
uh, and still have just a huge array of participants in National Healthcare Decisions Day, whether it's professionals or facilities, we've got chaplains and um, houses of worship, we've got lawyers involved, we've got banks involved, we've got community centers like uh, JCCs and YMCAs, uh, I mean, you name it, it's, it's all sorts of different folks um, recognizing that we all need to work together. Uh, and the more that we do something on a collective basis, the more likelihood is that people are going to pay attention. And, and obviously a huge way of doing that these days is getting out on social media. And so for National Healthcare Decisions Day, um, we encourage people to, to go out and post on Facebook or Twitter or wherever their source of, of communication is and just share that they've updated their plan. Uh, you don't have to share with anyone other than your decision maker and family necessarily the specifics of what you have got in your plan, but just tell people you've done it and encourage them to do the same and, and say we, we can't have people without a plan. So um, this next slide is uh, is it's old at this point. Um, believe it or not, I feel it's crazy, but um, we've actually, because of the way that the event has uh, moved a little bit, we don't have the same tracking um, that we used to, but this was from the first 10 years. And as you can see, just huge, huge outreach effort. Um, the national organizations are some of the big ones that you'd recognize like the American Medical Association, Hospital Association, AARP, and things like that. Um, but then we've reached millions uh, in various forms or another. We even got uh, hashtag NHDD to trend on Twitter in 2015, which is um, that's quite an accomplishment if you understand how those algorithms work. Um, and we've had lots of advanced directives uh, created on these days alone. But what I, what I hope that you would do, um, thinking ahead to this year, uh, National Healthcare Decisions Day falls on a Friday, um, at least I think it does. Um, and so, you know, in some ways that timing is great, in some ways that timing is lousy, um, but that's sort of like advanced care planning, right? The, the, the timing is not ever perfect. Um, but what I would encourage people to do is hold some sort of event, use the, the 16th as, a, as the day that you send out uh, tools and resources or your communication or whatever, and use that as the uh, triggering day to then say, look, when you're at home for the weekend, as well you should be because there's a pandemic outside and you shouldn't be out you know, ro roaming around the country, take that time over the weekend to sit down with your family, or get on the phone or get on a Zoom, whatever, and do the work. Um, so many, many times we use National Health Care Decision Day as the day to do the work, and I think with it being on a Friday, um, this is probably a great year to, to encourage people to do the work and make sure that they do it before the end of the weekend. Um, hopefully you all know this. Um, it's just the reality is that this is not just for our constituents. It's not for our clients. It's not for our patients. Um, this is for all of us. Every single one of us on this, um, this presentation, we're all potential patients. We're all in need of an advanced care plan. Um, and the other thing is when you do advanced care planning professionally, if you haven't done it for yourself, you're not a very good advocate. Um, it's not that you're going to come up with the same sorts of decisions, um, but simple exercise of choosing among your children, uh, making choices and thinking about what you would want with respect to end of life uh, technology and pain control, all these sorts of things. Um, just the exercise alone is something that will make you a better uh, advocate for other people. So get out there and talk about it, volunteer however you need it. Obviously things are, are different these days, the collaboration, the community and, and all that um, is altered because of the, the pandemic, but get out there on social media, use your distribution channels however you can and, uh, and share those resources. Um, where's all this going? Where's that sort of the puck, if you will, going? Um, first and foremost, psychiatric advance directives um, one of the, the unfortunate repercussions of the pandemic, as we've seen over and over and we keep reading about, is going to be impact on mental health. Um, I think that is uh, sort of a tsunami that's yet to reach the shores. Um, but advanced care planning has traditionally been focused on end-of-life issues, and it, and it definitely has uh, great 
uh, advantages for those with mental health issues. And so we're trying to make sure that people are appreciating that, not just thinking of these as end of life issues. Um, we do need better integration with PULSE, MOLS, LOLS, POST, whatever acronym your particular state has for um, the initiatives that, that turn advanced care plans into medical orders. Uh, I'd love to see the development of a national form. Uh, interestingly enough, just yesterday, the American Bar Association reached out to me to see if I would be willing to join a um, committee for the development of like a, a national model advanced directive. And of course I said yes. Um, so who knows, we may, we may see a national form uh, coming after all. And finally, there was a really interesting article in the New York Times just a couple couple of weeks ago about wrongful life suits. And these are this, this concept of people who wanted not to be resuscitated. They had a DNR and the family overrode it or uh, the, the healthcare facility intervened and intubated when they weren't supposed to per the advanced directive. And for a long time, I tracked these, uh, these matters and they never went anywhere. Uh, of course, we're very, very reluctant to entertain a wrongful life suit. It just seems so bizarre for the courts. And they are starting to take hold. Um, so I think once <laughs> there's the fear of litigation for providers, uh, not that we want that to be uh, the catalyst for why people start to do the right thing with advanced care planning, but I've been beating my head against the wall for so long that if it takes the fear of litigation to get people to pay attention, I'm okay with that too. So, um, but we're here because we're doing it for the right reasons. And so I thank everyone for joining us. Um, one of the things that I did, uh, if you can see it, I'm gonna try. There was a 5K walk run that happened almost 10 years ago in Wisconsin or Minnesota, maybe there's somebody that's on um, and they created T-shirts in addition to doing this walk. And I, every time I'm on one of these things, I always might wear my T-shirt. So um, there's so many things you can do. Uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions, um, but I'm gonna turn it over to my friend and colleague, Laura, who is here in Richmond with me um, and has sort of taken some of what we've done nationally and has created a great example of how to do something locally. So um, there's the information, the website, go get them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, and I, I think it would be great for all of us on the call to get t-shirts. I want an NHTV t-shirt. Um, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to hand it quickly over to Laura because I know Laura has some limited time um, since she's hopping on her own webinar coming up soon. Um, Nathan, you, you mentioned mental health, and I think it's a really nice segue because I know Laura uh, is working with that. Honoring choices on some really uh, fabulous programs for those that are most vulnerable. Um, and right now, uh, so many um, are really vulnerable. Um, and so I want to just do a quick introduction to Laura and Laura, I'll let you jump in and, and share a little bit about what you're doing. Um, Laura has been working with grassroots um, groups and community organizations for over a decade now. Um, and what I love about her work is that she's really building relationships um, and supporting people to be really inclusive. Um, in the initiatives uh, that they're doing, and uh, that, that is no, um, we are no stranger to that, Laura. So I'm really excited um, when I read that you are a trained birth doula, um, and um, kind of, I love that. Uh, I I have a background in maternal child health, um, and I joke that I've come full circle. So when I read you were a bull do birth doula, I'm like, ah, Laura is like coming full circle of life. Um, and that's really what this is all about, is, is the circle of life. Um, so Laura is bringing so much experience uh, and a humanistic approach to the work that she does. Um, and so um, she is also a certified Respecting Choices First Step Facilitator and instructor. Um, and we're uh, working with Respecting Choices um, together and, and really learning from how people are using um, the different, different tools and approaches. And so really excited to have you here. So Laura, let me pass it on to you and um, have you share a little bit about what you're doing. NHDD. And I'm going to pop your um, picture and, and contact here for, for later, but go ahead, Laura. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks, Nathan, for the warm handoff. I'm really uh, delighted that we're able to represent Virginia and specifically Richmond on this call today. And I'm um, just so grateful to Patty for um, the invitation to be here with you all because I, I honestly am feeling a little bit of imposter syndrome because I'm like, we don't have it all figured out. We're figuring it out just like everybody else on this call, but 
we're doing our best um, and I'm happy to be able to just share a little bit of what we're doing. So as um, Patty and Nathan mentioned, I'm with Honoring Choices Virginia. We're an independent nonprofit organization and our vision is to ensure that every Virginian has access to quality advanced care planning and that their on wishes are honored in the delivery of care. Um, so we we do really have a two pronged approach to our work as an independent organization. We do provide services directly to the community with regard to advanced care planning, um, support services, um, resources, guides, consult appointments. Um, and we also work with um, partners, specifically health professionals, other um, complementary types of organizations um, and advocates in our community to really educate and equip them to support planning and also to honor individual decisions. So we do take a very broad approach to advanced care planning. Um, Nathan was really emphasizing, you know, where um, we can expand this work to include so much more than just end of life decisions. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the programs that we have coming up, which I hope some of you all will join us for. But um, we consider ourselves, for those of you who are familiar with the Respecting Choices model, a first steps organization. So we emphasize early planning for all adults. Um, and as Patty was saying, we really do um, put a lot of energy and emphasis into making sure that our programming and our overall approach, especially to training advocates in the region, is geared toward meeting the needs of folks who don't who don't typically engage with advanced care planning or historically haven't. And so we just put a lot of emphasis into really understanding why that's happening. Um, we have a very small team. Uh, well, I say team, but really I mean staff. We have a staff of 1.75 to be exact. Um, but because of that, our overall team is made up primarily of volunteers and partners. Um, our staff is just primarily here to support their work. Um, Nathan is actually one of those um, teammates, so I appreciate him and I'm glad to have him as part of our team. Um, and our partners include all different types of organizations. You know, because we're independent, we really can work with everyone and every anyone and everyone who's interested in this work. So government agencies, major health systems, private practices, clinics, faith and cultural communities, hospice and home health, other nonprofits. Um, we try to just meet folks where they're at and give them tools that they can use with their clients and patients and communities. So transitioning to National Healthcare Decisions Day, um, you know, we really found, uh, at least in our work with our partners, is that the most effective way that we can leverage National Healthcare Decisions Day is using it to really catalyze our network of partners um, and using it as a call to action for our professionals. Um, so, you know, we do work with community directly, but um, there's, there's very wide um, recognition, at least in our community, of what National Healthcare Decisions Day is. And so we find that we can use that as a time to call people together um, and really get them to take action. Um, and we try to, uh, with all of our efforts, not just with the NHDD, but have measurable, actionable goals for anyone who participates in our programs um, so that we can really increase the likelihood of them engaging um, with advanced care planning beyond just April 16th, you know, using it as that call to action for ongoing uh, work. So this year, Patty asked me to uh, just kind of highlight some of the things that we're doing, and we are still planning this so it could evolve um, over the next couple of months, but we're doing um, two main things. One is that um, actually the webinar that was mentioned that I'm about to hop back onto is that um, is part of our 2021 Advanced Care Planning Professional Learning Series. Um, this year uh, in the spring, we are focused on exploring advanced care planning through the lens of various patient populations that don't always get a ton of attention with advanced care planning, but are uh, you know, somewhat vulnerable with regard to uh, their wishes being honored and documented. And um, we want to really draw folks into the conversation on how these 
how uh, really person-centered care has evolved with these various patient populations. So um, our first one, which is at one o'clock, I encourage anyone to join us who's interested, is on advanced care planning and dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, in the month of April, we will be talking about advanced care planning and mental health. And we're working with a number of partners to pull this panel together and then partnering with um, our local NAMI, um, National Alliance for Mental Illness, to uh, really promote some resources that they've put together to support advanced care planning for those living with mental illness. Um, so we're we're working to with them to use the panel as a call to action for professionals, both in the mental health field, as well as professionals in other fields of medicine um, to really better understand how to support patients and community members who um, may be affected by this. Um, so again, just trying to use it as a springboard for further action. Um, we're also working with our um, local coalition in Richmond, as well as um, a couple of other coalitions around the state um, to build a cohesive messaging campaign um, around National Healthcare Decisions Day. Um, we have a, a sort of a local emerging coalition forming in our region, but we also have, as I mentioned, a number of collaboratives around the state that are interested in really doing something sort of statewide um, this year with regard to community and the folks that we all serve. So we are um, developing a campaign that's going to be community focused um, and trying to build cohesive messaging so that everyone who's participating across our coalitions can really um, be consistent and be pointing people to um, resources that exist in our communities and throughout the state. So um, we are hoping to perhaps hold a couple of virtual workshops that anybody across the state can attend um, and that we can be encouraging um, both professionals and community members to take part in. So with that, I'm gonna um, just kind of wrap myself up here, but I would love to, um, continue this conversation with anybody who's um, interested in learning more about our work or sharing ideas if you're working with similar populations. Um, my contact information is on the slide and um, I'm sorry that I have to jump off now, but perhaps I'll see some of you at one o'clock today. And thank you so much, Patty, for the invitation again. Thank you so much, Laura, for sticking with us and, and sharing all of what you're doing. And I, I appreciate you were able to, to stick stick here. If we have questions for you, um, and Laura, you provided your contact information. It's there. Um, anyone that has questions can pop it into the chat as well. Um, and we'll get any questions over to Laura if you don't have that ability to, to reach out to her directly. Um, but thank you. Thanks, for, Laura. For Go Virginia. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, and I, I just, I hadn't realized that we really have this Virginia contingency. Um, and so uh, by, by no, it, um, it wasn't, it wasn't planned, but I'm excited that uh, you all are linked. What really struck me, um, and if there's any questions for Laura, while you're still here, I don't, I think you have to pop off, but go ahead and put it in there. What really struck me about uh, what you talked about was the co coalitions and partnerships and relationship building. Um, this work is not in isolation, um, and you made that really clear on, on the, the number of things that you're doing, reaching out to others, um, reaching those that have expertise, so with NAMI, uh, with those with lived experience, um, and I love that you are um, thinking about and asking why aren't we reaching those um, populations who are vulnerable uh, and who aren't traditionally reached with advanced care planning, um, and so I really appreciate you as you are um, thinking about how can we um, ensure that everyone's needs are meet, met, not just the those that are easy to reach. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, hey, hey, Patty, just to, just to follow yeah, up ahead. on that, um, one of the things I think is so important about that, and I've I've, I've encouraged the same thing since day one of, of National Healthcare Decisions Day, but it's a great opportunity to um, use the event. You can call it an excuse, you can call it a catalyst, whatever, but let's just say that there's an organization or an individual out there in your community you've got a lot of interaction with, but the relationship's not great. Um, so I oftentimes use the example of a, of a nursing home that's regularly referring patients to a hospital, but the handoffs are just terrible. Um, and you're kind of struggling because you want to make things better. 
use National Health Care Decisions Day as an opportunity to say, hey, let's let's do something, you know, about the program or you know whatever for National Health Care Decisions Day. But now you've met the people. You, you're on a friendlier basis, and you can then say, all right, well now that that's done, hey, can we just talk about our our transfer protocol? Um, use this event in that way because it's and it's the same thing with individuals too. It's sort of disarming in that. It's just how could you say no to National Healthcare Decisions Day and use that as the trigger for other uh, kinds of initiatives? And that's that networking thing um, that is really, really powerful about this event. And so please take full advantage of it. How to say I 100% agree. <laughs> It's, it's in, you mentioned this, Laura, it's that overall, and Nathan, I know you've said this before in, in some of the newsletters uh, and messages you've been sending out throughout the year, is this is part of patient and family-centered care. Um, it is a component of holistic care uh, and looking and, and working with individuals as uh, patients, families, and, and community members. So I appreciate those, those comments. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I also meant to say in, in chat, if you have questions for Nathan as well, um, now is your chance uh, to, to go ahead and pop that in. If you want to uh, raise your hand, I'm going to take a quick peek. And Chrissy, you can help me if anyone's raising their hand. I can't quite see. Um, if anybody wants to unmute, you can do that as well. Um, so I'm going to, um, we have about 20 minutes left on the call. Um, we'll see if there's any questions coming in as we kind of wait and, and watch. Um, and we're going to open it up and give folks a chance to share a little bit about their plans uh, and ideas that you might have um, uh, that you can share with others on the call. Um, Laura, Jane had, a, uh, Conrad had a question for you on how can we watch your series? Yes, I appreciate that because I always forget to mention that <laughs> I am putting a, a link in the chat now and when you register, you should get an email right away with the link to, to join um, for Zoom for today, especially. So. Great, thank you, Laura. Uh, we also, and I'm going to mention this later on the call, but if you're not part of the Conversation Project um, Champions Facebook group, so if you are spreading this, this work in your community, um, we consider you a champion because you are champion conversations. Um, we have a discussion group to help share ideas um, and you can join that Facebook group if you're not part of it. I'll give you the link later on. But um, Laura uh, has popped the flyers with all the different courses on that, that Facebook group and we'll make sure that we, we share that throughout. Uh, we use that to help people share events that they have so you can each attend each other's events. Um, you can learn from each other. How do I run something or how do I, if I'm looking just to educate myself, it's a really great way um, to help learn and support each other as well. Um, thank you, Laura, for popping that in there. Um, so I'm gonna, um, so thank you both for sharing and really kind of setting the stage. I'm gonna open it up right now and we can, um, we can keep, keep the conversation going. What I'd like you to do, and so I'm um, kind of stealing this, we like at the Conversation Project, we learn from you all all the time, um, and we um, still, still shamelessly share, no, share, still shamelessly share wisely. Oh, I'm, getting my, I'm getting my acronym confused. It's late night here for me. Um, but so one of our team members uh, was, at another, was on another call, and they used this chat waterfall approach, and so we're going to test it out here. So I want you to think about you and your team. If you are part of a team, you may not. You may be reaching one person, and that is great. You reach one, um, and that's that's excellent. Um, now's an opportunity to chat in. What are you thinking of or already planning for NHDD this year? So if you've got some thoughts, if you've got some plans, maybe this is triggering something. What I want you to do is I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Uh, I don't want anyone to hit send yet. So. Take some time, chat it in. 30 seconds is not a lot of time, but what we want you to do is just at least share a little bit about what you're thinking about or what you're planning for. Um, I'm gonna give you the cue when 30 seconds is up, um, I'm gonna then tell you to hit send so we could then have a waterfall of chats at the same time. Oftentimes when people are typing and chats come in, you get distracted. So spend the next 30 seconds or so um, just typing in what you're thinking about and what some of your plans may be for NHDD. Okay. 
going to give you five more seconds. Don't hit, don't hit send yet. Five more seconds. I know it's not a lot, but just a, a flavor of what you're doing. Okay, go ahead and hit send if you're, if you're done. We're going to spend a little time reading through the chat and see what everybody's doing here. This is fantastic. Just going to give a little bit more quiet time so folks can keep reading what folks are sharing. This is great. I'm seeing a hey, lot can I just, of, oh yeah, go ahead, Nathan. I was just gonna say that I loved these sessions. I absolutely love them. I think Patty probably has the same feeling that I do in a lot of cases, which is um, we spend so much time in the um, beating the drum mode and sort of leading, leading the charge. We don't oftentimes get a, a full opportunity to turn around and see what's happening behind us. Um, and it's these kinds of conversations, these sorts of uh, descriptions of what you guys are doing and what has you motivated that um, it just sort of fills up my uh, my heart, if you will. It keeps me coming back. Um, it, one of the best parts about National Healthcare Decisions Day is that it's gotten so huge that it's not no longer measurable. Um, that's also one of the worst parts about it. So thank you guys for doing all this. I, I just I love it. I mean, it just I wish I could like explode with excitement. So thank you. <laughs> Sorry I, to interrupt. I couldn't agree with you more. No, no, I can't agree with you more. This is my most. I I love this, and I'm I'm floored, and especially thinking about um, what everyone's been going through over this last year. Um, and to me, this is the energy and excitement. And so we call this a chat waterfall. Um, we almost should call it um, a chat explosion and fireworks because to me, um, this is so exciting to see what people are doing. I see, um, and I'm not going to read everything, but we will, we are going to send this chat out. So you will, uh, Joan, I see your question. We're going to get this to everybody so you can see what everyone's doing. Um, if you take a peek at here, take a, take a look as you're reading through chat. If there's something that you're reading that you'd like to learn more about, um, we have a couple minutes. So now's your chance to maybe you can chat in and say, hey, um, uh, Mindy over in Northern Colorado, we'd like to hear a little bit more about that. But so if there's some, some connections you want to make here, go ahead and type that in or say, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in doing a series. I see a couple of you doing advanced care planning series. I love that. So you're building on to try to hook people in, it sounds like. Um, I see some of you that are working on a particular audience. Um, so Amanda, I see you're working on solar agers um, as a particular focus um, because that making sure, as we talked about it before, really eliminating that isolation. Um, I see um, so many great ideas on here. Focusing on um, social media and really like it doesn't have to be Zoom or events. It can be that education and, and information. You can see there's no one way, there's no one right way. Um, every way that everything that you're doing here is really exciting. Um, and so we'd love to you, you all to, if there's connections you want to make, go ahead and, and start making some of those connections. Um, yeah, and don't, don't feel like what you're doing is too small. Uh, I think we oftentimes get, get um, into that, that loop. And I'll tell you, there's, uh, I won't say the name, but there's somebody who said sort of lost momentum from last year. Pick up the phone, call your loved one, and just know that you've made a difference for yourself and your loved one. Like, that's good enough. Like, you don't have to move mountains here. Um, and if everyone were to do that, we wouldn't have to have this, this event. So um, don't be discouraged. Uh, 
don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. That's something I say almost every year about this. Um, if we had done that, we probably wouldn't have NHGD right now. We just took a chance and we said, we believe in this initiative and it's gonna evolve, it's gonna be organic and we can tweak it along the way. But if we try and make it perfect, we're never gonna get out of the gate. So um, in this age of, of COVID and being locked in and, and everything disrupted, um, just lower your bar for, for what counts as being satisfied. Um, I'm not saying you should lower your bar for what you're hoping to achieve. Um, it should be big. Be, be just ridiculous about your goals. Um, hey, create a national event. How about that, right? Um, but just be satisfied if you make it happen and you inspire yourself or a single colleague or a single loved one. That's all we need right now. Just keep positive. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nathan, for reminding us uh, of it's, it's important to the power of one um, is extremely yep. powerful. Um, and I love so um, folks are sharing videos on here. Thank you, Philip. I'm excited to, to take a peek at that. Um, uh, Oliver mentioned he's uh, particularly interested in early conversations and advanced care planning uh, for, for LGBTQ. There is a great um, there's a group. Uh, your decisions matter that I don't know if it's on the call, if Nina is on the call, um, that has been doing some programming um, um, around that community. And we've shared some on the Facebook group, a couple other groups are working uh, on that. So we'll help keep you connected. Um, we are also here to help connect you if we don't have time because we only have 10 more minutes on the call. But that's what our, our job is here at the Conversation Project is really to help support you and get you connected to folks that you wanna learn from. Uh, we joke that we're honeybees uh, because we pollinate ideas from one person to the other. So um, that's my role here. So you can you can tap that as much as you can. Um, so I'm gonna just have you all uh, continue if you wanna keep chatting. I'm gonna just share some of the new upcoming resources that are coming. Um, I was hoping to get folks off of mute to share a little bit more, uh, but I think you guys have, you all have some really fantastic um, examples that you're sharing in the chat. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to share our Facebook group so we can continue the conversation after this. Um, Chrissy, let me pause. Anyone raising their hand or um, uh, wanting to pop off mute that I missed? Uh, nope, I don't see anyone. Um, well, please do if you have any questions. Okay, super. Um, and I am going to just share a few other tidbits of other plans that we've heard um, in addition to this. Um, we have uh, one group, I don't think that they're on the call, so I just want to quickly share. You know, there's so many great ideas. Um, Frontier University is a, uh, Frontier uh, Nursing University is an all virtual university. So they've been virtual um, before COVID, so really knew how to, how to navigate all of this. Um, they have recently hosted an interactive virtual workshop for their students, their alumni, um, and uh, faculty. And um, in that virtual workshop, they did a quick survey of how many of our internal, those within our network, there are about 88 people on the call, have advanced directives. Um, and they then created a challenge um, and started a conversation project challenge on that call, um, urging their entire university community to set their own end of life plans before National Healthcare Decisions Day on April 16th. Um, they sent out a follow-up email with some really great motivational techniques and, and trying to put a little competition. Who's going to Who's going to um, come ahead? Is it is it going to be the nurses? Is it going to be the students? Is it going to be the, the faculty? So there's some lots of great ideas out there. Um, it doesn't have to be that big. Uh, as Nathan said, it can be just one. And, um, and so who is it that you want to reach um, and, and how can you do that? We've got time. It's not just on NHDD, as, as Nathan was saying, um, but it is, it is a great neutral catalyst for conversations, um, to quote Nathan, what you said before. I love that. Um, so. We've heard a lot of things and what we're already thinking about um, as some we know of some groups that are planning things for NHGD and our March call, we're going to um, focus on some opportunities in that March call. Um, before I get to the March call, I'm going to just share a little bit about what we're planning on doing. So as the conversation project, um, we shared this on a December call, but I want to share this here as another idea that you can take, you can use if this is helpful for you. Um, we decided for our group to really use um, that week uh, to help promote and get the word out. And so for each day leading up to the 16th, um, and Nathan, you were right, it is Friday, the 16th, 
Um, we are going to have a theme for each day and using our social media channels, we're going to focus on that theme for the day and um, encourage people on April 12th to start with you, start with self, uh, what really matters to you. And we're going to pair our social media messages with resources to make it easy for folks. You're going to start with you, use our conversation starter guide or our what matters to me workbook. Um, you might have resources that you've developed. Uh, there's some great tools out there. It uh, doesn't need to be our resources. So you can tag those tools on to give people an action or give someone uh, something to hold on to. So April 12th, we're going to start with um, start with you. We're going to move the next day, and our theme is going to be engage and talk with your family, your friends, those important to you. Um, and with that, we're going to share our how to choose a proxy and how to be a proxy guide. We're going to share some letter writing uh, that people have done. Um, ways to share and engage with those that really matter to you. On April 14th, um, we are going to have the theme of support for caregivers. It is so crucial um, in this time and all times to really provide support for caregivers. And so we're going to share the resources that we have for caregivers, um, our kit for those living with dementia, um, our pediatrics, and our healthcare team guides on that day. On the uh, 15th, so on Thursday, um, we are going to encourage folks to bring this to where people live, work, pray and learn um, and talk about ways that and other people that you can bring into this. I saw um, there was a tax accountant on here. I love that. There are all sorts of, there are death doulas um, on this call, death workers. There are folks from hospice palliative care, um, patient care advocacy I saw. Think about who else, how, who else can you tap in your circles um, and bring that to where you live, work and pray and learn. And then on the day of National Healthcare Decisions Day, um, that's the day, make your wishes known. Um, we're going to share a five wishes document, prepare for your care advance directives, some tools that people can take to actually get that, get those wishes in writing. Um, and so that's kind of our plan. If that's helpful for you all, we encourage you to use that, um, but you'll just stay tuned for that in April. Um, and you can, um, anything that we share, you're more than welcome to, um, to share on your social media sites as well. Um, so other ideas to tap into. So we've been hearing a uh, Along with what you're sharing in the chat, we have been hearing over the last uh, couple of weeks some really great plans. And so we're going to focus our March call, our March 17th community call, on some really great ideas on what can we do? We, we know there's Zoom fatigue all over. So what are some unique ways that we can actually encourage conversations? And we're going to share a couple examples of some um, upcoming and um, recent documentaries that have been released. Um, in addition to virtual theater that folks have been using. And so um, there is an upcoming film that is going to be aired on PBS. Um, I believe it's March 24th, and um, it is about aging. Um, the Conversation Project amongst uh, a couple of different groups have some um, commentary within that film. It's a fantastic film. Um, I encourage you to watch that. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in our March call. We are planning um, to do some uh, screening that is open for you all and for your community members around um, National Healthcare Decisions Day, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but we're going to learn a little bit more about that film on that call and how you could host a screening or be part of a screening that's going to uh, be happening over the next couple months. Um, there is a great documentary that just came out. Uh, Dr. Jessica Zitter uh, produced this, this uh, Caregiver, a Love Story documentary. Um, and is pairing that and using that screening of documentary um, in addition to there's a film that was out a few years ago, Extremis. Um, there's one end game. There's a lot of great films out there um, that you can use to help jumpstart action. And so um, she's going to be on that call to talk with us. Uh, Reverend Corey Kennard, um, who leads a congregation in Detroit, is going to share how um, they use that uh, screening of that film to jumpstart conversations in their congregation. Um, and then finally, Honoring Choices is a, a virtual theater um, that the um, playwright Elizabeth Coplin um, has turned. It was uh, in the theaters, uh, but she has turned this into um, a virtual production. Um, it was commissioned by Honoring Choices Pacific Northwest, um, and they've been doing some great things with this. They are hosting a screening, and you'll learn more about that that you can join, but they also have an opportunity. You can host your own screening with this. Um, and so we'll focus on those opportunities on that call in March. Um, so you can tap into opportunities that are here. Um, those that are on the call, if you've got things that are coming up that you, are, I know a bunch of you are doing some ACP workshops, um, share your links here, um, but also jump to the Facebook group. We'd love for you to share that and get the word out so um, other people can, can be part of your, um, your offerings as well. 
Um, I know I'm cruising through that. We got one more minute. This is just the dates and the times for our next call. So that call on March 17th is the same time. So 12 to 1 p.m. on Eastern time. And I mentioned before, so we are with that fast for a documentary. Um, our plan is to have a link, a, a screening link that people can watch that film on their own. We'll send that out to the community through our newsletter. Um, and have that open for a week so folks can watch that. And then we're hoping to have a panel presentation with um, those that have produced the film, with Ellen Goodman, who founded our project, um, and Kate DeBartolo, who heads our conversation project, and do a Q&A panel. Um, we're thinking around the 15th, April 15th, um, around that NHDD week, but we'll let you know about that date. That's kind of in the works uh, for something that you can be a part of. Um, and here is one last quick thing. Uh, we have new community guides that are coming up. I'm sorry I'm getting to the top of the hour. Um, I say draft because we're putting on some final tweaks, but those will be up within the next few days. Um, we have a getting started guide for community that we have revised. Um, it includes a new approach section. So learning from you all that have been doing this work for years. How do we approach this work? That's a new section. Um, we've updated the 10 questions in that guide. How do you bring this to your community? Um, and we've infused some additional examples in that guide. Um, that is a guide that you can pull apart and take one piece. You may not be interested in other pieces. Um, as I said, if you're just reaching one, as Nathan mentioned, it doesn't matter how big or how small this is. Um, you can take pieces of that guide to help you and kind of spark some ideas and help you plan. Um, a new guide that we have um, in addition, because a lot of people were asking us, how do, we, how do we teach this? How do we facilitate? So we put together a toolkit on teaching and facilitating um, using the conversation project resources and other resources um, that you can use. And so uh, we walk folks through 10 things to, to think about um, that we know have worked really well based on what we have heard back from community members, um, stories that we share that resonate with people and common questions that we get when we host uh, workshops and when others host workshops what they've shared with us over the years. Um, so I know I cruised through that really quickly. So. I am leaving you with a lot of um, things that you can do to keep connected in our community. Um, here is the uh, link to our website page, get involved. If you're not already connected with us and want to be on that Facebook group, if you don't get our newsletters, please, I encourage you to jump on that page. Um, thank you all for sharing your ideas and for uh, a lot of the really great um, content that you've been sharing in the chat. We will send all this out to you post call. Um, checking to see if I missed anything. Um, and I think we've got everything. Um, the only last thing I ask, we have a three question feedback. So um, if you have uh, three minutes of your time, two minutes of your time, let us know how this call went. Um, and I hope you all um, have a really good rest of your day today. I hope you had some learning. Um, I know we weren't able to pull, pull other folks into the call um, on audio, but I know the chat was um, was popping. So thanks so much, and we really hope um, you have um, some good ideas to spark um, you and, and get you excited for the next two months. Nathan, thank you so much again. Any last words for folks as we close this out? No, other than just to say thank you, guys. National Healthcare Decisions Day. Uh, at its core is grassroots and uh, it doesn't grow without you guys planting seeds. So um, keep on harvest. You have, I love it. Um, if I can ever be of help to you, um, I promise you I'm approachable. So reach out. I'd love to help. Um, so thank you, everybody. Great. Thank you, Nathan. And Chrissy, thank you for um, running this whole webinar. She's incredible and does a lot of work to put these together. So um, thank you all so much. And we'll see you next time. We'll stay on the line here. Uh, if there's any other chat, I'll, I'll be happy to chat with folks. Patty, did you see my post that I got power on as we were going along here? Oh, I missed that one. Good. <laughs> yeah, I, I said it, it It had to have been the, the NHCD good vibe. Um, so now if I can just get <laughs> hot water in the next 24 hours, I'll be all set. I'll be ready for the, the storm. I, I think all the ideas basically just the electrified your, your home space there. Mm. Uh, something like that, yeah. And the dog stayed down too, so it was like a great, great success all around. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much, Nathan. You bet. Well, thanks for doing this. It's always, it's always a pleasure to do it, and I, um, I do get charged up seeing what everybody's doing. It's just so awesome. I'm excited. Me too.
Joan, don't worry, we're going to get that chat to everybody. Right, I think that's a wrap. All right, Great. I'm gonna Thanks, sign everyone. off. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.